Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop. This time we're talking about routers and what size router you should get for your shop. So this is a question I get a lot from beginner woodworkers. They're looking at routers and what they can do because routers are a very versatile and very useful tool to have in the shop. But then you start looking at all the different sizes and be like, should I go with the biggest router? Can I get by with something a little smaller? What do I actually need in my shop? So that's what we're gonna cover in this video. Hopefully give you some guidance on what size router you actually need in your shop. Now Trident is the sponsor of the channel, so my routers are orange, but the things we're gonna be talking about today are gonna to be pretty well applicable to any brand. So basically there are three different categories of routers. They're gonna be based off of the horsepower rating of that router. You're gonna have one, two, and three, and it's gonna be plus or minus a quarter horsepower in either direction, will kind of get you into the basic categories of the different routers. So we're gonna start off with the small end of things, so these guys will be marketed as either a compact router or a trim router. They're gonna be very small and compact and very easy to handle. So that's gonna make them great for smaller handheld type jobs. Now, depending on the router manufacturer, you may be able to get routers that have interchangeable bases. So you can either have a compact plunge router, so a fully featured plunge base and a separate fixed base. Just as a bit of an aside, the difference between a plunge base and a fixed base so the plunge base is gonna be a lot more versatile. The router can actually be plunged in and out of the cut, which makes doing a lot of operations a lot easier because the bit can come in and out of the workpiece as you start or stop a cut. But that does come at the cost of just being a larger overall thing to hold on to. The fixed bases hold the router bit at a fixed distance from the base. As you're using it, you adjust your setting once and that's where the bit sits. And that fixed base is gonna be a lot more compact, a lot more easier to use. So if you're doing a lot of routing and you need one free hand to hold a workpiece, for instance, this can be used one-handed versus the plunge base. You're probably gonna to wanna to use two hands with that. And these sort of overarching themes of fixed versus plunge base are gonna hold true for the different sizes as well. The plunge base is gonna be a little more large and bulkier, and the fixed base is gonna be smaller, compact, and lighter. So use cases where a compact router is gonna come in handy. It's gonna be for, let's say, more lighter duty routing tasks, doing some simple edge profiling, roundovers, chamfers, things like that. Maybe doing some inlay work because these are very easy to maneuver and you can freehand inlay things very easily with a small compact router. The biggest limiting thing with the compact routers is gonna be the bit size that they're gonna accept. They are pretty much gonna be limited to just a quarter inch collet bit. So you're gonna have to have specifically only quarter inch bits in here, which can be a little limiting as you start to expand your woodworking world. So for instance, you're gonna be limited to smaller spiral bits like this guy here versus a larger router, which would be able to run a half inch bit like this. Now maybe that's not a big deal, but maybe you wanna start spinning stuff like this. You need to have that half inch shank on there because this would be way too delicate and fragile if it was a quarter inch shank. And they don't even make them with a quarter inch shank because that would just shear off and you break your bit the first time you use it. So that's something you have to keep in mind too with these smaller routers is your bits are gonna be a little more limited. You can get a lot of the different common profiles and everything in all quarter inch shanks, but as the bit size increases versus the shank, like if you're using a three quarter inch straight bit with a quarter inch shank, that's gonna have a higher likelihood of actually breaking than a three quarter inch bit with a half inch shank. I broke a lot of bits back in the day when I only had a quarter inch collet to run. So that's the compact router. It's very easy to handle, very easy to maneuver, great for handheld and one-handed routing and a lot of small detail or intricate work. And it can do some larger tasks, although not as effectively as some of the bigger routers that can run the bigger bits. Next, let's move up to the two horsepower class of routers. This one here is two and a quarter. And the biggest jump you're gonna get when you're going from a compact or trim router to a two horse is going to be the collet size. Now you're into the world of having the half inch collets so you can accept the larger and more robust bits. And going along with those larger bits, you also have that bigger motor to be able to spin and drive those bits to actually make those cuts. So that is gonna come at a little bit of a trade off because this is obviously quite a bit bigger than this router here. So it does actually take up a little more space in the shop. It is a little more bulky and heavy to actually move around. So if you're doing a lot of fine detail work, it might not be the best fit because you may end up getting fatigued. And you also lose the advantage of being able to use the router one-handed because this would be 
physically impossible or at least not very practical to use one-handed. You may also find that this size of router has a little more on the accessory side too, like uh, fences or edge guides or extended base plates or other things you can buy to make this thing a little more versatile and a little more useful. Now, as far as handheld use, this size is still very flexible and easy to maneuver and maintain. You don't feel like you're gonna get some kind of upper body workout trying to use this thing in a shop, which is really nice. And that's gonna kind of lead us into the three horsepower class of router, which is this guy here. So you can see, again, you're like incrementally jumping up in physical size and not just size, but also weight, or I guess overall density. This size router is going to be significantly heavier than your two horsepower router. Like this will definitely wear you out if you actually have to carry it around. Now, as far as things you gain going from the two to the three, you do gain that extra horsepower of motor. So you'll be able to spin larger bits or take bigger chunks out of pieces of wood. So if you wanna do some panel raising or you wanna do some heavy hogging waste removal, this thing is not really gonna slow down. Or you can take heavier passes than you could with the two horsepower router. That's sort of the biggest kind of compromise between the two. Both routers can spin this bit. This router could probably take a bigger cut with this bit than this can. So the big difference there is you're just making multiple passes with this guy versus maybe a single pass with this one. Another kind of big advantage or the biggest advantage overall besides the power factor is the overall size of these ones will give you more range in the cutter depth you can actually do. So in the case of a plunge router, this thing will actually plunge to a greater distance than the two horsepower one will. So if you don't have a super long bit and you need to get down to like the bottom of a hole somewhere, this one could probably get down there for you versus that guy, which, uh, which wouldn't. So with all that being said, let me give you some, uh, some of my own personal opinions on what size router you should get. So if you're getting into woodworking and you're doing like, let's say, I don't know, the craftier type of woodworking, like you're doing cutting boards, charcuterie boards, like serving trays, things like that, a compact router is going to be a fantastic fit for you. Being able to do the whole one hand routing and holding your workpiece thing, whatever this motion is, <laughs> it's gonna be a, a great fit for you. You can also do a lot more kind of smaller stuff with this as you grow into that space. If you wanna do some inlay into your work or you wanna do even like slightly larger edge profiles, you can do that with the compact router just fine. If you start getting into furniture and you wanna start doing some mortises with the router, you can spin that quarter inch bit or even a three eighths bit in there and you can make your mortises for most furniture projects. It's gonna cover most of the mortise sizes you're gonna make. Now, if you're getting into woodworking more on the furniture side, I would suggest the two and a quarter or the two or whatever that size you're looking at is in this kind of category, the two horsepower category. This is going to allow you to do basically everything you could possibly want and still be kind of small and compact enough to do some detail work as well. So if you want to make your own moldings for your furniture, if you want to spin a half inch spiral bit to make mortises or for hogging out bulk material, or whatever, you can do that with this guy here. You can do like surface flattening with it too. Uh, as you start getting into the bigger, beefier things and you're moving a lot more stock, you'll have to take more passes than if you had the bigger router, but the instances where you actually have that be an issue is pretty uncommon. I would save the three horse to just to put in the router table because you don't necessarily have to worry about holding it and maneuvering it because it's in the table hanging out there and you have all the power you would need if you want to get more into like raised panels and you're spinning those big old bits that you really can't do uh, handheld. So, you know, in the perfect world, you have all three for all the different use cases, but uh, as you start getting into it, kind of picking one place to start is uh, a good way to go. The two horse is the one that I use the most. This is the size of the router that I really started with and I use this still to this day. I don't really grab the three horse really ever. It basically just lives in the router table and it's there if I need it. So that's the very basics of the different categories of routers. There is a ton of things you can do with routers, lots of jigs and techniques and little tricks and things. Router, like the router world is a whole different like 
giant world in, a, in and of itself. So hopefully you got uh, your answers here if you're trying to figure out where to go with your pathway to router domination or whatever we're calling this. <laughs> that is going to do it for this one. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on routers or anything else here in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy working and routing. Router woodworking.